So welcome to uh, the DJ Forced X podcast, everyone. Um, this is actually the 10th anniversary, the actual date of my first podcast 10 years ago that this is going out on. And I've got a very special guest on this show. Um, <laughs> I have Ryan McCombs uh, from the band Drowning Pool. Um, and also you will know him from Soil as well. Um, but we're going to talk all things Drowning Pool today. But um, yeah, Ryan, welcome to the show again. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like I feel special now. I'm like yeah. on the anniversary program here. That's that's you, awesome. I, I appreciate you uh you spending your anniversary you talking to my whatever, yep. the Mars. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know all the English slang. So you should do. You fucking live over here now. So Yeah, yeah. I've been there for seven years now. I miss it, right? I'm stuck. I've been you know, I've been either down south. On this tour that I'm currently on, this Drowning Pool tour, yeah. um, we've either been down south or it, the past few shows have been like in Vegas or California. Yeah. So I am so over the friggin' sun and the friggin' heat right now. I just want, my wife thinks I'm insane. She's, of course, back in England. Yeah. And I'm just like, she's talking about, you know, I had to turn the heater on for the first time <laughs> this, this, this winter, or not winter, but this year. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh, I'm so jealous. I just, I just want to get back to my my English chilly weather. And <laughs> I, I love, I that's one of the things. I'm I'm weirdo. I, I love yeah. the weather in England, so I can't wait to get back to it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I love the weather here as well. It's not, it's not. I mean, like I said before, and I used to live in Florida, so it was, you know, oh, sun three six five. Right? Yeah, and humidity down there, humidity and everything. So uh, yeah. I went back there about a month ago for the first time since we moved back as well, and initially it's nice because you've got all this heat suddenly and it's like yeah, everything's bright, <laughs> right. and colorful and you're in this like disney bubble and and yeah you know, um but then uh yeah once you sort of like realize you think i've just worn, gone through three t-shirts today yes and <laughs> <laughs> and I get back to england and it's like okay i can i can wear this t-shirt a couple of days in a row yeah <laughs> so um <laughs> I, I lived for five years. I lived in Louisiana, which is just on the other side of the Gulf from yeah. Florida. And um, it, it, if I always said my my mailbox uh, from in the house I lived at there, the mailbox in that community was about maybe twenty feet away. But after you went to go get the mail, you felt like you needed a shower because yeah. it was just so sticky yeah. and sweaty, and yeah. it just. I don't miss. I I love my my English. I always say English weather for people that live over here. I always say it's very similar to Washington State. Okay. And that that it's it, it, it's 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 overcast a lot. Yeah, but when it is pretty, it's it's pretty damn pretty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. I mean, at the moment, I mean, if it is, if it sounds like someone's taking a piss in the background, it is literally just the rain coming out. The <laughs> rain right now. Hopefully, the noise cancellation thing on this on this microphone should take care of that but if it does as, it's, not, it's not me pissing into a pot or anything. <laughs> as oddly as it sounds <laughs> i'm actually jealous right now <laughs> <laughs> but, um yeah no i mean obviously you're, you're over in the states with drowning pool uh you're over in um are you in california or hollywood tonight yeah we are actually parked right outside of the uh, world famous whiskey a go-go so yeah that's where we're playing at tonight that's amazing that's a i mean i've never been to that venue but i'd love to it's obviously legendary um it, and, it is a great place man and i really respect it so i don't mean any, any disrespect towards it whatsoever but it's very similar to a lot of your u.s and it, it, it's pretty much the same worldwide but especially in the u.s it seems like your really famous uh like historical venues yeah. it's like somebody somebody didn't want to run the sweeper for fear of destroying some sort of sentimental value because they're usually some of the some of the uh the whiskey, the whiskey's yes. one of the nicer ones of it. Yes, yes. But but a lot of <laughs> a lot of your historical, you know, venues that are still around here in the states are are, are pretty uh, yeah. vintage. Let's yeah. they're very vintage. They're very. Yes. That's <laughs> a very good word. It's a very British word. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I get you. It's uh, it they 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 don't they, yeah they don't clean as such. It's very. Yeah. It's, I should, you know, the more I say that, there's like last time I was at the whiskey, they did redo their dressing rooms and it was awesome. And so they actually have done a lot. Oh, okay. So I, I should, I shouldn't lump them in there, but it, we were talking about it the other day and it made me think about like playing, because I actually got to play CBGBs before it went away. Oh, okay. I was there in New York. And man, that place was, I, I'm surprised that that didn't like, like whatever ball and 
ball, you know, whatever equipment, gear, whatever industrial that they used to tear that place down with. I'm surprised that it didn't rot to the ground just by yeah. touching it. Yeah. So that was place was, nice. that place had like 17 different deadly diseases then and, and the cures for them all in one yeah. place. It was, I was going to say, if, if COVID was going to come from anywhere, it would yes, have. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that, whatever, whatever that place had would have killed COVID in like three yeah. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We need more places like that. Um, <laughs> um, but you're on the, um, uh, what do they call it? The uh, the No Authority Tour, I think you've called no it. No Authority Tour, yes. Um, and you've just released a brand new single as well uh, called Revolution, The Final Amen, um, right. which is your first track with, with Drowning Pool in 13 years. Yeah, yeah, um, it has been a, it's been a while, man. It's been so good to be back with the guys because I've been back with the guys now for a little over a year. Yeah. And we instantly started writing because it was just, it opened the floodgates on, on everybody, Stevie, Mike, CJ, myself. Yeah. It just, it opened the flood to be, just to be back in the same room together again. It just, uh, the floodgates were opened and we just, nice. we started right. So, but we've been so busy um, since I've been back that we've just had such sparse moments that we were able to get together with our producer and, and get stuff down. Um, he's actually on the road with us right now because because of time being so yeah. so thin that he actually flew out and spent some a few the last few days on the road with us just because so that we can get some more of these songs that we've been working on start getting this the, the skeleton down so we can start building it up and and get those ready for release as well. Nice. So I mean, what I mean, what's the plan at the moment? Obviously, the single uh, you released there was a beer you collaborate a company you collaborated on a beer as well or a lager. I think it was. Yeah, a, a, yeah, a beer company. Uh, oh, my brain just went blank. Uh, sorry. Uh, just <laughs> roll. Uh, no. Uh, anyway, I could probably check the fridge. But the <laughs> the beer co- a beer company uh, bottled from out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Actually, got a hold of us and they were interested in releasing a a drowning pool themed beer. So it was it was a uh, named. They, they hopefully named it Revolution after the yeah. new song that we just we just had put out. Yeah, and I mean that's pretty cool. I've seen a lot of um, or a few, not a lot, but a few artists have that collaboration with with beer companies um, or you know IPAs. I think yours was right. was, a, was a Czech dark lager. I think it was Czech as a vacuum. Right, dark. right, right. Yeah, um, you got to be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can't check it out though because I don't drink. Right, right. So, <laughs> I don't drink beer, and so like we okay. got together with the with the heads of the people that put it out. We got together with them on the radio over here, yeah. and uh, down in Dallas, kind of like make the announcement and everything like that. And they're all they're all cracking them open and everything. And I was like, oh no, I just had a I just had a procedure done. I can't I can't just trying to you know. So I wasn't hurting anybody's feelings by going. No, I think beer tastes like piss, and I don't want anything to do. With it. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> are you recommending your fans buy it though they <laughs> <laughs> right did, did, I, did i sell it really well am i on that yes maybe i'm the one that shouldn't be doing interviews um <laughs> there, might be a, there might be a select a select few of your fans that might be into that no, you know, right. no i tell you it's a, yeah it's, <laughs> um no, we we shared it with uh, we do our v, vips every night and everything and have people come out uh, hang out at the bus and and uh, we hang out with them for for a while and they've they've partook in, in the uh, revolution beers and they love right. it. I mean, for a beer drinker from everything I've experienced, a beer drinker is going to enjoy it. So okay, good, I'm I'm happy about that. Yeah, nice. I'm just not a beer drinker, so <laughs> no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, so obviously with 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 the the single and everything, I mean, I'm I know it's early days because you've just released that song, but have you got uh, like many more ready to sort of like plot for the rest of the year or is this supporting this tour and then you're going to sort of go away finish the album and then sort of come back with with the album i suppose you know i i'm not going to say anything about release dates because we ran into that problem with revolution <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like every, we kept we kept saying because we did we uh, we know how long it takes us to do stuff and we do stuff rather quickly hmm. but every time we would like have a have a, a time blocked out to go record or go work on it all of a sudden we'd get an offer we'd get you know some show that we couldn't say no to some benefit or something that we didn't want to say no to that we that we ended up having to keep moving the recording dates back 
So we kept announcing like, oh, we're going to release a song, blah, blah, blah. It was like that came and went. And so next thing you know, it's like six months later and the song's finally coming out. So I don't want to run into that again. But the the hope is to have another single out soon. Yeah. And then there will be a release uh, in 2025. Okay, cool. And then... I wouldn't be surprised to say that it, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple releases in 2025. Okay, cool. I mean, I look forward to it because I'm loving the new song. Um, I appreciate that. I've had that like playing since since it was available. Um, and by releases, I mean uh, by re- I'm sorry, but by releases, I mean like an album of some sort. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I took it as that. It's um no, I mean looking forward to it because um like I followed Drowning Pool obviously since since the very beginning, um you know um with uh sinner and things like that that came out the debut album um right. and sort of following it through the years obviously with you on vocals for a little bit and then um shit i've forgotten his name jason moreno that's it jason moreno came on into it and then and then now you're back with it as well and like listening to it and sort of trying to like um what's the word trying to try how do you like it's the, this is the only soil question i'm going to ask you but like, how do you sort of like separate Ryan Soil, Ryan Drowning Pool? Like, because they are different. Like, I can I can listen to those tracks side by side, and you know the the tone of your voice is the same, but the the musicality is different. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, and I don't really have to think about it because you're you hit it right on the head. The music is different. Yeah, and I mean, Drowning Pool and Soil, you know, we we've toured together back. We yeah. did a, we did a UK Europe run. Uh, what was that? That was damage plan, drowning pool, and soil. You know, yeah, we did way was, back in the day. Yeah, I was there. And uh, oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we did. You know, we're in the same genre. We're, we're you know yeah. everything, but yeah. there is there is a there's a there's a big you know there's a big difference though. To be honest, <laughs> musically, um, I I write differently to the two different bands. Um, just for that fact, because yeah. the music is different. So therefore, right, sing like, like you said, tone of the voice is never going to change. I, I got I got a window about that big, so I don't have <laughs> a very far I'm going. Um, but the, uh, but I am because of the because of the music being a little different. Um, it does, it does accept a little bit more melody. A drowning pool music does yeah a revolution revolution is not necessarily a good uh a good <laughs> release to have out there right now talking about melodies because it, it's pretty uh it's pretty straight in your face but uh but there's a lot of drowning pool music that that the writing the the the, the musicality of it does allow me to be um it does allow me to dance on it in a different way to, yeah. to play with melodies a little bit more you're you're spot on yes yeah that, mean, that was a that was a long-winded way of saying yes you are right yeah, that's I like that. That's good. It's good. Um, no, I mean, I I listened to uh, it was at Full Circle. I think that was your first album with them. Um, yeah, some, there's some absolutely great tracks on there. Um, and like you say, the musicality is different. I mean, like uh, Reason I'm Alive for one. That's like a almost a ballad for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. In that respect. Um, but you've got you know tracks like Enemy, and then you have got the ones uh, you got one uh, called Soldier, I think as well, which is obviously for the troops um and you know going on to i mean you did a live album as well but you did the self-titled drowning pool album which is right. always whenever you have a self-titled one it's it's very poignant because it's like the band kind of know that that is that is them that album is them and there's some great tracks on that album as well yeah that that to the to date i'm hoping this will be different uh in 2025 if i'm asked but uh <laughs> To this point in my career, that's my favorite thing. That's my favorite body of work that I've done was the self-titled Drowning Pool record. Nice. Um, <clears throat> uh, there, of course, I have I have favorite songs from all the albums that I've been yeah. I've been able to be a part of. I've been allowed to be a part of. Um, but the self-titled Drowning Pool record is is the yeah that's my that's my favorite body of work. I'd say. Nice, nice. I mean, always I, has been. Yeah, I love that. I was gonna say, I was gonna have the CDs ready, but I. I haven't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> since we're there, I, like I got like CDs, like just like stacks of them everywhere, and I right I bet. these things, and I never do. Um, but I've got stacks of vinyl next to me. I'm going through at the moment. I haven't got any drowning pool vinyl. Um, we'll have to fix that. 
yeah. when, I see, when I see you next. Well, actually, Drowning Pool will be will be on the other side of the pond next year. So okay, cool. Well, I, we're we're working on two of them, and one of them has been. You know what? I'll just leave it at that. We're working on two of them, but I can guarantee you yeah. that at some point in time, if not twice, we will be on the other side of the pond next year. And that's great to hear because I was like, that was one of my follow up questions to this. Um, <laughs> was, are you going to hit our shores with it? Obviously, I know. Obviously, you live over here, um, and yeah. and and you know, it, it's it, that way. It's not a very long trip for you. It's a long trip for everyone else. Oh yeah, finally, because I've spent <laughs> the last year and a half. I've got so many airline miles right now. I don't even know yeah, whether I'm coming. Sure. My body doesn't know what time zone I'm in anymore. Yeah. It just I, I can't sleep either place. But gonna, um, last time I met you, which was last year, I mean, I, 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 I DJ'd your wedding renewal. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And and you were between countries then as well. Like, I flew in literally like two or three days before the renewal, and then <laughs> straight out again. Um, right. <laughs> but and i could tell like you were very like <laughs> you were there obviously for the moment and everything very but kind of yes. once, once that moment had kind of like you know when when we were all mingling afterwards and stuff there was that kind of air of like this like the jet lag is hitting you or you know yes the time zone yes. is like, like where am i i'm in this country like pub somewhere and um, <laughs> <laughs> i've got to fly back out to wherever you were flying back out to to do whatever show Good. yeah it's... And all that kind of stuff I mean, so, even right now we have this like this US leg of this tour that we're on. Mm. And then I have a few days off where I fly to Vegas to to do vocally some recording sessions vocally with what CJ and uh and Stevie and uh and Sean, our producer, has been working on in the back lounge of the bus. They've been getting some rough skeletons of the, yeah. of some new like I said earlier, of some new music. So then after this tour is over, I fly to Vegas to throw some rough tracks vocally on that because i'm still in the states because just like a week later yeah. we have a big festival with Mudvayne and el nino and stuff that we're doing down in mexico and yeah. then i finally get to fly home for a few days before doing a, a uk run with with those other yahoos so yeah it's a yeah you're a yeah it's a you're very busy yeah, yeah i i don't know who thought that two bands singing for two bands was a good idea but man that, that guy dumb yeah yeah no, I was, no I, was, I mean i was gonna say because i followed you for a long time i follow you on the socials and stuff like that and i know i like like covid and stuff was a real like the lockdown was a real pain for you it was pain for everyone oh and yeah hit i can see you coming out of it like a coiled spring and just sort of like <laughs> <laughs> you came out and it was like you know it was a soil run then you rejoin you know like last year you rejoined drowning pool and then you're keeping both both going which is amazing yeah. like you know because like for those two entities to exist crossing over with the same you know vocalist uh, in this case yeah. but, like enabled to sort of maintain that as well obviously you know, yeah my my throat hasn't worked my i i haven't toured like this between the two bands I, um i haven't toured like this since i was you know 20 years younger yeah so it, it's i remember we were looking at that. Uh, we were, I was talking to the drowning pool booking agent at one point early on after joining the band. And he was like, I forgot to tell you, like at this point in your career, how many shows in a row are you good with? And he had in the tentative uh, workup of the routing for this tour, we're getting ready to go on at the time. Yeah. He had nine shows in a row. Mm. And I, I replied to him. I could hear him typing in the background. I could hear him on his computer, but you know, he's kind of like half ass talking to me. And I was like, well, Andrew, I'm pretty sure. I hope it's, freaking it's freaking a nine and he stops typing typing he goes oh you saw that did you i said yeah i saw that <laughs> i said i wouldn't have liked that when i was you know 20 years younger let alone now yeah but uh we we've done a, we've done a bunch of six and even seven in a row since i've been back and uh the whole I'm, every time we do it and we get through it i'm just like I'm, I'm there's that little air of pride in me that i'm kind of like oh i made it cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been a long year on the throat but uh how, how do you but, how uh, do you maintain that up. yeah how do you maintain that because it's like i mean this is useful information for aspiring singers and metal singers specifically but what do you have a specific routine for your voice or is it, you just born it with... used to be it <laughs> used to be a lot of rum and, and marlboros okay but um but but that that that's how I would always answer that question back in the yeah. day, but it's changed a lot now because it's vodka and Marlboros now. Okay, but no, no, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, 
change the spirit. It's all good. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, because of having that, that COVID time off. Yeah. When Drowning Pool got a hold of me, I hadn't sang in a long time or whatever you want to call what I do. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't um, yelled in key in a, <laughs> in a long yeah. time. So for the first time in my career, I've never done warm ups. I've never done warm downs. I've never done any of that stuff. Okay. And, but for the first time in my career, I actually went to a vocal coach there in, in uh, Swindon and, and got some, got some like warm ups and stuff yeah. to do because I was concerned of where my voice was going to be hitting the stage again. Yeah. So, so nowadays, this is the first time in my career, you know, 75 years later that I'm, that I'm actually doing, I'm doing uh warm ups. This ain't much, but it's, you know, anything's more than I used to do. And yeah. I, I would definitely tell people out there that if when you're touring and stuff, you meet people on the road that just, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying this in a braggart way. Uh, it's, it's like an American football or I bet, I bet a football also. If I follow that, I probably know better, but you, you have guys, you have guys that are just built for the sport and they can play a 10, 12, 13 year career and never get injured. And then you have guys that seem like they're constantly on injured reserve. And, um, and you meet those, that type of situation. You run into that type of situation a, a lot on the road touring where with a singer, you'll have somebody that can just do it day in and day out and they're fine. And then, you know, they may have, for me, it's always my second show. My second show is a little rough vocally. I have, a, I, the voice is like, kind of like, ah, yeah. and then after I get past that, then I'm fine again. Yeah. But, um, but you run into people that are constantly having to cancel shows or postpone shows or, or they use a lot of tracks or something because their voice just can't hold up to the night in and night out the, the, the touring will do. I was always blessed. Thank goodness with the ability just to, you know, back in the day, drink my rum, smoke my cigarettes, go do my thing and go to bed and wake up and do the next thing the next day and, and do a, a year's worth of that or whatever for a, for a touring cycle and, and never had a problem. Um, but this is the first time that I've actually been smart enough to realize that there will be a day yeah. that, that the, it doesn't work anymore. So just trying to squeeze as much out of it as possible. Yeah. No, fair is, enough. Is, as long as people are allowing me to do it, which is the number one thing. I mean, yeah. it's amazing to be at this point in my career and people are still giving me the time of day and allowing me to do this. So as long as they're allowing me to do it, you know, I, I need to be smart enough to take the little precaution, the little, th you know, stuff that I can to try to make sure that I'm able to take advantage of their kindness. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And it, it's, I mean, it's testament to sort of like the longevity of, of the career you've you've had so far. You know, it, what, what we're looking at now is like 20 plus years within. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Sort of Professionally, like, yeah. It's yeah. been, jeez. Uh, because I technically signed my first deal in 97 okay. with, with, uh, with, yeah, that doesn't count. We'll go with 2001. <laughs> 2000, 2001 was the the major label crap so we'll, we'll stick yeah. with that yeah i mean and it's you know you've managed to keep it going like you say a lot of metal vocalists especially ones that i've known i mean i i i was doing vocals in 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 a band for a long while as well and and like i didn't know what i was doing to start with and like one day i was like you know playing i play like the first show the next day i didn't have a voice so i had to figure out a way of right like, you know um figuring that out and 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 i you know vocal um coach which was mm -hmm. great um that helped me sort of like learn how to control the the heat if you will the, the screaming part of it and right in the throat and also with um things like uh like vocal zone lozenges and stuff which kind of just like numb the throat a little bit yeah. um so you like you that. were smart about it i that that would be my that'd be my advice for anybody anybody getting going or it, even if you've been doing it for a while and, and if yeah. you haven't visited a vocal coach you may hold on, you may grab one thing out of the laundry list of stuff they tell you of do's and don'ts and try this and try that. You may hold on to one thing that works for you. That one thing that works for you is going to be, you're going to be better off because of it. So yeah. definitely, definitely it, it is your, if you want it to be your craft, treat it as such and, yeah. and, uh, and, and go talk to one of these people that know. 
Because that, yeah. that one little thing might buy you another couple of years of doing what you love to do. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, you could just fade out. Well, not fade. Yeah, fade out, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking with a voice box in your throat after a right, while. Right, right. Um, but yeah, um, no, that's, uh, no, that's obviously that, that, you know, that's great advice for, for, for vocalists out there and stuff like that. Even like, you know, like you said, the first part of your career it was literally drinks and smokes, you know, and, and you kind of got on with it. But now you realize that, you know, in order to keep this going, you know, there's, there's, there are people out there that can kind of give you that, the helping hand. If you will, yeah, um, and I should, uh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be like drinks because I mean I didn't even start drinking until my thirties, so my whole first run with soil uh, from ninety seven to to two thousand four, I didn't drink a drop. So okay. I, you know, I just, but I did. I've always been a, I've always been a slave to that stupid tobacco company. So yeah. <laughs> they'll get you. They always, do. yeah, <laughs> it's the American way. Yeah, now nowadays it's great because nowadays I don't I don't even think about a cigarette unless I'm on tour. Like when I'm home and and with the wife and and mm -hmm. and uh, my family, I don't even the thought doesn't even cross my mind. But as soon as there's something music band related, well, as soon as I get off the airplane back wherever it is I'm going to, I I'm sparking up like a dumbass and, yeah, and having a cigarette. Yeah, it's the stress. It's the stress trigger. So it, it is. It stresses you out. It's like, yeah. And you get get some more time with my wife, so I can buy a couple more years of living. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, um, Ryan, I've got I've got one question left for you. That's right. And I'll let you get on with the rest of your uh, your day because it's nice and early over okay. there in, in in Hollywood, and I know you've got some other bits to do and stuff. But um, I think last time you were on the podcast, it was it was a long time ago. But I asked you, I think your three most pivotal records and your hobbies away from music. So I remember it was like uh clearance uh clearwater revival um was like one of your favorite <laughs> you just you just, when you said that question that was the first band that popped in my head once yeah. again <laughs> <laughs> so i remember these things um yeah. so it, you know it's a curse sometimes <clears throat> but um what i what I, so i switch up my last questions for people who've been on the show before um so i want to find out from you it might even be the same answer, but like the three, if you can think of three of the best live bands you've seen or be, three of the best shows you've been oh, to, wow. um, just to sort of like, you know, you know, if, if there are any like, you know, shows you went to that's like, oh shit, that blew me away. Man, I am such rubbish for this one because uh, <laughs> I, because I, I, I love the fact I'm so thankful for the fact that I've been, I've been blessed with the opportunity to do this for a living. And I know how much of a, of an honor that is because there's, I mean, there's only so many seats at the table. So to be able to actually sit at the, you know, to actually be able to do this yeah. and then be allowed to do it is, is amazing. But at the same time that I say that the reason that I, that I, that I'm saying that first is I, when it comes to a day off on the road or something, and it's a day off for me. If okay. if we're no matter what tour I'm on, I hardly ever get out to really see many of the bands that I'm on tour with because I just you have you have that moment on stage that is like the greatest moment of your day uh, when you you're, you get to share some time with the people to come out to the shows. But at the same time. I, I need some quiet the rest of the time. I need uh, <laughs> I need some some time away from the the uh, chaos and the yeah. and I can't I can't watch shows like I used to because nowadays when I do go see a show I find myself watching the crew a lot of times. Yeah. Like I'll see somebody on stage and I'll see that there's some trouble. Maybe there's some an issue with a mic or maybe there's an issue with their instrument or with the monitor and I can tell by their body language what's going on and I'm looking around to see if any of the crew guys are seeing this <laughs> and so I can't watch the show like I did back in the day you know, yeah. as a kid I can't watch the show with the same enjoyment because I'm looking at all the technical bullshit going on but uh but one of the live shows that I, I loved doing and I got to I saw them in London just a couple of years ago uh right shortly after covid was godsmack okay. and uh shannon larkin playing playing in a band playing in drowning pool and mike loose has spoiled the crap out of me with drummers he is the captain man i mean he runs every aspect of the show so he spoiled me and it was after playing with mike that i got this funny kind of joking reputation for having an issue with drummers and everything um because <laughs> 
I I played with the captain, you know. I played with the the, the five star general back there. So I, everybody else, I was kind of like, come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but to watch a drummer, man, Shannon Larkin of Godsmack is just, I love it. I mean, he, he's a friend. I, I love spending time. You know, when we get to catch up and everything. But just as a musician, to watch, I, I sit there when Godsmack's playing, and even though the rest of the band is kicking ass and they sound great live. Yeah, I just love watching Shannon Larkin play. He is a showman. He is a showman back there. Excuse me, a showman back there on the drums. So Godsmack would be one of those bands. Um, <coughs> oh man! Over the, you're talking like over the career bands. Yeah, seen. and I mean any yeah. show. To, I mean it doesn't have to be rock or metal either. If you go to anything else, you know, I mean we could we could switch it up and change the three to something else. But I was going to. I love I love the hard hit. Of, I mean. This has been some years since we, it's been several years since we should, shared the stage together, but Black Label Society. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, anytime you get a chance to watch Zach, and, and uh, he's always surrounding himself with extremely talented musicians as well. But anytime you get to see Zach, it's great. And, um, you know, I'm not going to get into the personal opinions on anything because everybody's got their own opinion and everybody yep. deserves to have their own opinion. And that's all good. Um, but no matter what you what how you feel about it, um, and I'm not even going to talk about how I feel about the, <laughs> the, the, the about it. But it, we did we did uh, we played with Pantera with their on their first show back in the states with the yeah. new with the whatever you want to call it uh, the, the the lineup the lineup. Is, uh, yeah the lineup that yeah. it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. Regardless of how you feel about it, regardless, you know, it doesn't matter how I feel about it. The show itself is freaking amazing. Yeah, I mean they sound great, and they're definitely there's definitely a, a, a definitely bringing it as, yeah. as far you know definitely definitely giving people that of of newer generations that didn't have a chance to see Pantera back in the day they're they're giving them a taste of that. Yeah, you know, it'd never be the same without the brothers. No. But um, but they're giving them a, a taste of what a lot of us were lucky enough to grow up with. Yeah. And um, uh, so yeah, that would be that'd be my three real quick. Godsmack, uh, BLS, and well, Zach got in there twice. That little sneak in there twice. Yeah. <laughs> You'd added Ozzy Osbourne from a few years ago as well. You would have gotten in there three times. Oh yeah. Um, right. Right. <laughs> Z just Z just controlling the whole friggin'. He is. Yeah. He is. He's like that. That is the. Uh, he's the dude, I, behind. He's got to be one of the heaviest, hardest workers in the business. So when you think about everything, he goes from Zach Sabbath to Black Label Society. The dude is always on the road. Yeah. He, yeah. And also his content online as well when he's doing stuff. He was doing a bunch. Right. Of, I don't know if it's recent, but a few years ago, and it was just like. He is one of the hardest workers, and and he was always the the like going with the Pantera thing, not to sort of sp stir the pot, but he was always the logical progression progression per or progressor to um, dime. Like yeah, he, the, the relationship. I think that was a that was an easy when you would when you thought about like who could do it, who could do it well, yeah, and who would do it with their heart in the right place. He yeah. was like the uh, the number one because of the relationship he had with them. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even before Vinny unfortunately passed away, it was like it, there was always rumors that you know they were talking, but it was always Zach Wild that was the 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 right. the person that was going to come in and 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 play. So um, I feel with the, whatever's going on with this current current run they're doing at the moment, it's sort of it it's you know it's a tribute to what was before. I was I'm going to say right. I, I wasn't I, I saw them live years ago back in london and and it was one of the worst shows ever uh, <laughs> <laughs> but i i still like i watched their like home video tapes and stuff like that and i saw their like oh. like live shows they had like but i mean the problem i i mean the problem um was that um uh phil was just totally wasted at the show oh literally and it was a mess like i mean the yeah. band sounded solid don't get me wrong but it was just a bit of a bit of a letdown like I hear you. After kind of, you know, but that was why. And Absolutely. It kind of left that impression on me. I never got to sort of obviously see them in that lineup again. Um, right. You know, um, but I saw, you know, I saw Damage Plan with you guys. Um, so I got to see you again in that, in that respect. And, um, and I think I saw Rex Brown in something as well. He was in a, I can't remember who it was. He was playing bass for someone, but separately. Yeah. He, 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 yeah. He dabbled in several different little. 
Hit. things jumped on different runs for different bands yeah 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 he kept busy and it was um you know and it was just it was just one of those things but you know like w- with the current run i was like with um what was it fucking lincoln park at the moment you know bringing some, right i mean kind of fucking kind of like yourself you kind of came in after a band member unfortunately passed right away. Yeah. And, and and you know and then there's like suddenly i mean these if it happened like today maybe it would have been different like but the vitriol pit that band got like like pantera got you know it's just kind of like it's crazy you know in that respect just like the, the sort of and it's supposed to be an, an experience you go back and it's for the generation of people that missed out not necessarily Dude, so the fans you know the 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 the, the social media sucks you know, social media is cool because it, it has given us all a way to, to stay in contact. But that's yeah. pretty much where the, the coolness of it stops. Yeah. You know, people people are so, uh, there's so much negativity. I mean, TV show people criticizing TV shows and movies, all, all anybody's got to say about anything anymore is negative shit. And it's just like, man, it just, you jump on social media nowadays and it's just, it's a bummer. Yeah. And uh, and then and then you got people with with the politics, and I mean it, it's very, you know the the they think they're making a difference by posting some stupid meme on on friggin' social media instead of yeah. actually doing something about the the issue. Yeah. And then if you get over here in the states, if they actually do to something physical, some stupid rioting or some horse shit like that. So I mean it's but yes, social media <laughs> is just the man. If I could go back in time, and you know, there's that. Uh, what would you do if you go back in time and you know I go kill baby so and so so this didn't happen or whatever? <laughs> Dude, my my thing would be I would go I would do whatever I could to make so sure that social media never existed, so that you would walk into a restaurant and you wouldn't see a family sitting at a table with everybody with their faces and their phones, and they would that families would actually be communicating again, yeah. and uh, and people would be communicating again, and, and not so quick to be tough and talk shit on the social media. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's, anyway, it's, I ran. No, no, I, right. I went yeah. off on a rant. No, no, this is great. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, like, I totally agree. It's it's like there's there's people think they have anonymity online, or they have a right to say. You know, there there is that element of you do have a right to say. You know, the whole free speech thing. But there's also there's consequences to that free speech. You know, and yeah. and a lot of people don't don't have that like that that barrier of of um it, trying to, you know what I mean. It's just, yeah, it's, it, it's it's yeah. very it's a very cool thing, and if for used in a business sense, like to, to communicate, um, whether it's to spread the word about podcasts, whether it's to spread the word about tours, shows, to to use it to advertise something that you're doing, or not advertise, but to at least let people know that it exists. Yeah. It's invaluable in that sense. Um, the, the fact that you have a new record coming out, whatever the case may be, it is it is a way to allow people that want to know to know. Yeah. But at the same time, it's also such a disgusting, ugly, friggin' creation that it's it's a on a social level that uh yeah yeah if I I I go back in time and take care of that yeah <laughs> <laughs> a few babies that are gonna go missing <laughs> um but yeah no I mean Ryan I I will we'll leave it on that but yeah no thank you very much I I appreciate your time on this and and I'd... obviously. You know, you're on you're on tour with with Drowning Pool at the moment. So anyway, my friends in the states, you're currently at, at the whiskey tonight. Uh, this sure, won't come whiskey, until, yeah. uh, this won't go out until Tuesday, so this may not hit in time for any of the dates. I'm gonna have a quick look to see what your dates. Yeah, are. we've got we got two more weeks. You got two more weeks. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got right there. Anybody just take a still shot and zoom up on that. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Um, <laughs> but we can check it out, and obviously, you know. Um, you guys coming over, back over here next year that's going to be fantastic as well because there's this whole yeah. like, kind of I'd say resurgence but of of that kind of sound that era of of metal um that you were quite pivotal in the new metal if you let would. me say uh, let me go back on that on that comment i made about drowning pool in the uk and let's say that if i'm allowed if i'm allowed to say that it's 100 percent guaranteed then I am saying right now that it's 100% guaranteed. But if for some reason I'm not allowed to say it, then I never said that. Okay. All right. That's fine. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll let other people sort that out. <laughs> right, right. There's, there's there's people getting paid for that. Exactly. They're the brains. We just we just try and help with the... 
Yeah, just just go Thank yell, monkey. That's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but no, I mean, like it's fine. I mean, I know you're going to be in the UK um, next month with with your other with your other projects, <laughs> um, and that's sure. a heck of a tour as well. So I'm hoping that you know, with the drowning pool as well, like this is kind of reliving my youth to a certain degree. Like nice. I was like sort of mid to late nineties in the UK or even further than that, you know, going to London all the time and seeing all these bands. I got to see like, you know, Deftones when they first came over here. Um, Limp Biscuit were like opening. No, they weren't opening. They were main support to Soulfly and stuff like that. And it was just like awesome. seeing all these bands and then seeing you guys um, when you were sort of blowing up over here as well. Um, and even playing your, your music at my nightclubs that I DJ um, and stuff like that. And people still sing along to those songs, you know, yeah. thank I'll, goodness. You know, you've, you've kind of you've you've made these songs that are kind of living living on, uh, in the yeah. you know, and people know them. Generations of people know them and stuff. So, I've been I've been I've been really lucky to play with a lot of good musicians and uh, and uh, and like I said before, at the end of the day, just a lot of people out there. Beautiful thing, a lot of people out there still allowing us to do what we do. So, taking advantage. It is absolutely. It's a, it is a beautiful thing. Uh, no, we're gonna we're gonna leave it on that on a beautiful thing <laughs> there we go thank you so much for your time man i really no worries, appreciate it it's good talking to you again i, I, yep. I appreciate it yeah no problem it's all pleasure is all over here for this and um yeah um good luck with the rest of your tour and i'll see you in england uh next month all right you say some of those great skies for me now oh well don't worry there'll be plenty <laughs> <laughs> all right you take care oh, thank you man bye-bye bye-bye